Good. Good, mo good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Maurizio Pilitu. I'm the DevOps Director at Finos. And uh, together with uh, Arslan Naem, uh, Suze Field Engineer, and David De Rossier, um from Canonical, we are going to present today how you can deploy Legend using uh, cloud native technologies. We've heard a lot of things uh, about Legend today, right? Uh, a lot of exciting news, a lot of people integrating and clearly integrating with Legend, and clearly people want to use and deploy it. Uh, so I feel like everyone knows what Legend is, right? And I feel a little bit uh, scared to say what Legend is in front of the Legend team, but. Uh, let's keep it simple, right? So Legend is an end-to-end -end, uh, modeling uh, platform that uh, puts a strong accent on collaboration. Um, it is composed, it is a, a, a microservice architecture. It is composed by um, uh, several components. Uh, the components we are looking at right here are the core components. We have Studio, which is the UI, what you use on a web browser. And um, uh, this service is backed by two other components. One is called the engine and, and the other one is called SDLC. The backend layer is composed by a MongoDB instance and GitLab. So uh, GitLab can be used uh, as a uh, SaaS, the gitlab.com SaaS offering, or you can spin up your GitLab community or ultimate enterprise version. So um, how do we run Legend? Uh, and uh, what are the, the use cases, right, for people to actually uh, start using this uh, technology? So we divided the deployment options into three main blocks, right? Uh, I want to start from the one in the middle, the local uh, run, which is to me probably the most common use case, right? People want to see Legend running on their laptop, and they want to do it with a couple of clicks. For this reason, the Legend team have uh, contributed, and it's part of the main Legend uh, repository, github.com slash finos slash legend. Uh, they contributed a Docker Compose uh, script, so you can run it. Uh, you will, uh, it will use uh, some default configuration to actually run quickly, uh, fast, on your local host environment. Uh, so this methodology, in my opinion, is particularly useful um, if you want to just do a quick demo, if you want to show legend internally, um, and uh, you want to use like, the, the latest and greatest version of the, of the software. But what if you are trying to change the code of legend and you want to you wanna see your change running um, locally? And in that case, you would need to build the software from source. And uh, this option is probably the longest and most difficult approach. Uh, it takes a little bit of time, and it, it relies on uh, the technologies used to build the software, which are Maven and Yarn. Um, finally, we have a third option, which is the production-ready environment. So imagine that you have tested the technology. Um, your boss is happy and uh, they want to see it actually uh, being used uh, on a, you know, uh, give a wider scope to the test, to the internal test. In that case, you would need to have a different type of deployment. Um, and although Legend is, let's say, it's based on cloud native technologies, so it's Kubernetes friendly, right now uh, we don't have, or un up until last month, we didn't have any Kubernetes uh, official manifest released by the Legend team uh, to do such a thing. So um, it's quite exciting that in the last month, I think, uh, two uh, members, two Finos members, have stepped up to actually contribute different ways of deploying Legend, specifically. Uh, Suze have contributed Helm charts that you can find uh, on uh, github.com slash finos slash legend dash integration dash helm. And uh, for those who are not familiar, helm is a packaging system for Kubernetes. It allows you to uh, deploy legend with one command. That's it, right? Uh, which is quite exciting. The other exciting thing about helm 
um, at least for my personal opinion, is that I can actually use a set of deployment scripts locally and on a production-ready environment using the very same strategy, right? So uh, this is what I did uh, as soon as I saw uh, as soon as I saw Na, uh, Arsalan and the SUSE team contributing to Helm. I couldn't wait. Like uh, I just spun up my local minikube and I got it running actually in a matter of minutes. So this is what I'm gonna. Um, what I actually wanted to present to you today, but then after looking at the demos of Arsalan and David, uh, I think it's probably better for you to see the, what uh, Rancher and Canonical can do with these technologies. Um, I'm going to actually, we're gonna share a blog post, a couple of blog posts, and uh, this recording will be available shortly. So hopefully you will be able to reproduce, easily reproduce what you see today on screen um, also uh, in your own local environment or within your own firm. So um, I actually have uh, a, let me, let me actually show you. I actually wrote this on a GIST file, which is a little bit raw, uh, but um, deploying right now, legend using the Helm chart is extremely simple, right? It's a matter of starting Minikube, which is a software that is available on every you know, distribution, operating system distribution, running a tunnel to allow having a public IP, setting up the gitlab.com application, and starting the Helm chart. So, Regardless of the prerequisites, what we're really saying is that legend runs with this command, which is quite amazing, right? So, um, I'll, if you're interested in this, please come and find me after this session. I will be more than happy to demo this on my laptop, and if you're interested, even running it on yours. Um, so, I want to actually invite Arsalan on stage, um, from Suze, who is going to show you what the Helm chart can do, you know, using uh, Rancher uh, desktop, right? And the Rancher uh, suite. Hopefully the demo gods are with us. Yeah. <laughs> we are doing some of the internet, so thank you. I won't need it. Thank you. All right. All right, are we, okay, good. All right, guys, so this is Rancher. So just to give you like a quick brief, Rancher is like we can manage Kubernetes clusters across multiple control planes, whether it's in the cloud, on-prem, or even on your local machine. So here we have two clusters, really. We have one in AWS, spun up three Rancher, and we have a local cluster uh, using Rancher Desktop. So Rancher Desktop is basically similar to Minikube. It runs like a virtual machine, and you know, it's all just packaged. You don't have to do it. You just install the DMG file and install a little virtual machine with K3S, which is what our uh, CNCF 100% Kubernetes cluster, so it's edge-based. From here, we can you know, change the Kubernetes settings if you wanted to, but this just creates a Kubernetes cluster just from a click. From this, you can see we'll have, you know, you can just connect to it. It'll add it to your local context, and you'll have a Kubernetes cluster up and running that simple from just installing Rancher Desktop. What you can do is you can bring that into Rancher and then manage that from there. So this means you can deploy applications to it and actually manage the workloads running inside your cluster. So from here, we can obviously spin up clusters in multiple environments, all from a single control plane, or we can just import it, which is what I did. So you can go check out Rancher Desktop for that. So once we actually deploy Rancher, so here we have the local map that's what's running on my machine. You know, we can see Rancher will, you know, the Helm chart will deploy the engine, the studio, the server, and just using Rancher, we can, you know, we can do some simple tasks like we can view the log, we can drop into shell from here. The one thing I'll say is when I created this Helm chart, I kept the source of truth similar to the Docker Compose. I used the Docker Compose files that the legend people have and just made the Helm chart around that. So there's no deviation between it and there's less uh, changes to keep up. So from that, you know, we can actually deploy um, Legend. So what does the deployment look like? 
So the first thing we would do is we would drop in the Helm repo, um, which is on the legend uh, GitHub. And from here, we can configure our uh, chart. So here we put in the URL. So this could be like our local machine. So since we're running on a Mac, we can use ngrok. Uh, that's our host name. Uh, if you have a private GitLab, we can throw that in there. Our secrets. If you do want, if you do have it on the cloud and you want to do HTTPS, you can add a secret. This is just a Kubernetes secret, and in the blog post, uh, there's details on how to create the secret. It could be Let's Encrypt. That's what I've used, and that basically just creates it uh, over a secure session. So that means uh, it'll save it over HTTPS. Once we have it deployed and we hit install, so if we we could later on and come back and change this. So for example, if we come into installed apps and say I want to update one of the images, right? I have legend deployed here. I will do edit upgrade. So one thing that if you use Helm on the command line, what happens is sometimes you lose your values. You don't know what values you use. Again, Rancher would help you store that. We can come in here and say go to images, untick this, and we can bump up the images individually for the studio, for the server. And you know, it's quite easy and quite diversified how to actually roll out changes. Then we could use built-in tools like monitoring inside um, Rancher. So I think I dropped my connection there. But this gives us CPU and memory usage of all the uh, different components and also like, the bandwidth. So we can use Kubernetes principles and then apply like horizontal pod security policies, uh, auto-scaling. So that means it can scale up and scale down if there's more load on the server or the engine, just using Kubernetes knowledge rather than having actual direct infrastructure knowledge. From that, so here we have... So once we have it deployed, so this one's running on my machine. As you can see, it's using the ngrok URL. And this one is using the normal HTTPS, which is running in AWS. And that's about it. Yeah, I try to keep it minimal. Didn't want to break anything. <laughs> of course, we're going really well. So, um, uh, well, you can, you can keep it hooked. Oh. So um, David can present from here. So as we mentioned before, uh, this is, this is what was uh, enabled by the fact that SUSE contributed a Helm chart. Uh, but prior to that, Canonical um, started working on uh, an integration with a technology called Juju, which actually provides like, more support to the, to the deployment and runtime of the architecture. And I'll let David uh, uh, walk you through this. Sure, thank you. Let me make sure we get on the right slide here. So uh, we put together a, a series of charms that basically compose the, the um, legend application together. So if you haven't used Juju, Juju is an orchestrator that allows you to, to not only configure and manage your application or your infrastructure, but also orchestrate components together, relate them together with a single command. So here you can see this single command is Juju deploy FinOS legend bundle. That bundle exists up on charmhub.io. And it pulls down a series of, inside that bundle, it's a simple YAML file. It pulls down a, a, a series of different charms. Those charms define each of the discrete components that are part of the legend uh, application. So within this deployment here, it actually will, will handle all of the interrelations between those discrete applications. Um, I'm not gonna actually do the, oops, sorry. I'm not gonna do the actual demo because I have a pre-recorded session here that I'll walk you through. I do have infrastructure sitting with me today that I can actually show you outside that I can do this live, I can show you exactly how these components work. But, uh, whoops, let's make sure we get access. Oh. Is this not gonna play? Yeah, let's, let's do that, sorry. That's okay. Needs access to Google Drive. Sorry, Aslam. <laughs> the demo deities have struck us again. This is where the, the issues, right? Yeah, it should be fine. There you go, present mode. Oh, you have the same, same issue. Request access. I do, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, we, we got enough time. Is there any question? 
while we're, we set up this. Is anyone wanting to use, like I know someone does, <laughs> someone in the audience, but if you have any question while we set up, uh, while we set up the demo of Juju, please. Uh, Yeah, so it's a it's a um, containerized architecture, right? So this is the core, and we have five components. Now, slowly, the Legend team is releasing more components. Uh, we just open sourced another component called uh, uh, Depot, and uh, there is I'm not sure. Uh, Pierre, help me out here. Is there any other component? The relational database. The query, yes. So, like, I would expect the the legend architecture to get to grow a little bit wider. But in general, like, the main like the the bulk load is done by the engine. Um, SDLC is just a facade uh, of the GitLab.com API, and Studio is the UI. So it's. Uh, Although it's quite articulated, the load is more on the front end, right? Because it runs on the browser. Um, but yeah, that's, I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah. Yes, yeah, legend uh, dash integration dash helm. Yeah, normally we're so it's, uh, it. <laughs> it's quite interesting to also see like this type of integrations uh, like uh, becoming part of the legend project. Although the lead maintainers of these components like will not be so the Goldman Sachs team, right? So we actually see collaboration at work. Right. Um, and, um, and actually the possibility to, to actually scale out the development of such a, you know, important and big uh, infrastructure. Yeah, yeah. This is so much easier. There's the display. Right. So, um, it's on glass. right now, um, within the official legend code base, as I said before, right, you have a, you have one way to run it locally. Oh, that's why it wasn't And with with the technology Docker Compose that is not suggested to be used as in production to be used in product. It's not a production ready technology. Or you build from source, right? So you take the source code of legend and it takes roughly one hour-ish to build uh, the jar files and, uh, and the yarn, the web pack package that you can later run. Uh, up to you. Right now, again, like, I, I feel like this was, uh, we, we have to keep in mind that Legend was contributed a year ago, and it was a huge endeavor. And yes, we, we kind of, like, I think that consciously the Legend team, uh, like, prioritized uh, things like full open sourcing, uh, documentation, uh, SDLC, um, and relational database mapping. Um, and I feel like right now, like, seeing the uptake of this technology and the community wanting to deploy it, that it was a natural reaction to actually invest more into deployment, right? So my personal take is that these technologies are the future of production-ready deployments for Legend, right? Uh, but again, keep me honest here, folks. <laughs> okay, so their silence means a lot to me. <laughs> So I, I hope I answered your question. Sorry for the technical difficulties, all. Okay, so let me walk you through this as, as is it working? Yeah, okay, good. AV challenges. So I'll walk you through this. I do have, like I said, a live demo. Here we're just running Juju status. This just tells us the status of our controller and our models. We ran Juju clouds here. It actually shows, I'll just pause, oops, just pause this. Um, so this actually shows us the clouds that are assigned in this particular cluster right now, there's none assigned. Then we're going to bootstrap a microcates, uh, sorry, we're going to bootstrap a Juju controller inside the existing Kubernetes 
cluster that's already there. You see microcates just a few lines above. We're gonna bootstrap the Juju controller. Juju controller is not, a, is not a physical entity, it's a logical entity that basically allows you to manage the substrate below and the applications above that controller. It's already deployed that controller now. We're gonna go ahead and add the model to hold the application, the legend application. The model itself is, is essentially equivalent to like a Kubernetes namespace. It's a, it's a canvas that you aggregate all of your applications into. You can, we'll talk about this in a few slides later. Uh, you aggregate all your applications, your permissions, your roles, all that into the model. A controller can have multiple models and a Juju can have multiple, Juju instance can have multiple controllers. So this one happens to be talking to microcates. I can also have a controller that talks to AWS, GKE, vSphere, local hardware, mass. Now we're gonna put the status of Juju under watch here so that we can see what's happening as it's deploying that. So you, you probably missed it there for a second, but it, I actually executed the Juju deploy bundle and then this is actually going to deploy the charm version of the legend bundle, which includes all of those discrete applications. It's going to relate all those applications. You'll see that some of these are gonna go into a blocked state. That blocked state is because the application itself requires a couple of actions that happen out of band of the deployment itself. One of those is going to GitLab and getting an authorization token and then using that authorization token to authorize SDLC and Studio. So you'll see that here, we'll, we'll just pop out really quick. We'll launch a browser. We'll grab those auth tokens. Um, from inside GitLab. So this is the GitLab instance that's running in, inside the Docker container that was run as part of this bundle. We grab that authorization token and then we authorize the studio. You're gonna see here that it's importing the certs. This, is, this step right here is no longer necessary, but uh, it will create the certs. Then it will use that authorization token to authenticate the API. And then we pass that token into a Juju config here. So basically what I'm doing, instead of editing a big long YAML file, is I'm saying Juju config, add that token to the end of the specific application that GitLab needs. Now you'll see these services come back up. They're all green and active, which is what we expect. Everything is related. Then we'll go ahead to the SDLC. Uh, sorry, we're gonna go to the studio here. Now that we've gotten the token for GitLab itself, we're gonna go to the studio. We're gonna authorize the studio to use that GitLab instance. You'll see here, we'll go to the studio URL and it will tell us unauthorized in a moment. So legend is now up, but not authorized for this user. So you'll see that when we go to the actual studio and try to visit that to use and interact with it, you'll see unauthorized there in the bottom right corner. Now we have to do one more action outside, which is to get the authorization token for that interface. We get that from the SDLC. So you'll see that here, we go to SDLC, pop that into the browser, and then we'll authorize that. And then when we reload studio, we'll be back into studio and that's it. It's about six minutes end to end when you go through all the different steps um, and you're, you're up and running in studio. There you go. And now we're gonna authorize SDLC. Now when we reload studio, we got unauthorized before. Now we're gonna go ahead and reload studio and you'll see that we have success. And now you have a canvas that you can start to begin to build your models from. It's literally that simple. Any questions? <laughs> so I can talk about Juju later outside. Uh, I can talk about how this model works outside. I have a live demo if anybody wants to see all the mechanics and what goes on behind the scenes here as well. So uh, we can talk about that. Um, just really quickly here, these are the different uh, resources that Juju can actually manage deploying this onto. So you can deploy this onto on-prem, local, public cloud, hybrid cloud. You can have your MongoDB locally, you can have your SDLC on public cloud, you can deploy your machines with MAS, you can deploy this in any sort of heterogeneous way that you, that you want. The Juju controller sits on top of that, so it's essentially just an agent that runs that the Juju client talks to and then deals with the applications and the substrate above it. And then Juju Bootstrap will build that controller onto those environments. Then you can use Juju to deploy apps like Legend, like we did here, from charmhub.io, and there's hundreds of applications up on charmhub that you can deploy with Juju, including things like OpenStack, MySQL, Postgres, Grafana, and so on. The model that we talked about when we did the add model, again, this is just a canvas where you compose your different applications. It provides service isolation, so it's separate from other models, separate from other controllers. It provides access control, so you can manage the access to applications and services within that model. It also is a repeatable entity, so you can, you can deploy multiple times idempotently, and it isolates the boundaries between the different applications and services from themselves as well as from other models and other controllers that you might manage. If you had to do this manually, 
these are the discrete steps that you would do it. You have to deploy each one of those individually and then relate them together, which is what the bundle does for you. So each of these applications has a relationship. Mongo has a relationship to SDLC. Some of those have a relationship to GitLab so that you can, GitLab requires a token, Legend uh, offers that token and so on. And that's essentially what the integration is between the relationships of the charm that builds all this together for you. So all the operations, the day two operations, the configuration, the management of that cluster, all happens as part of that bundle. When I did Juju deploy, all of this happens automatically. So you don't have to sit there and log into each of these different services and manually configure all those. The charm actually handles that for you. The charms are managed by the community for the most part. So all of that, that uh, tribal knowledge that goes into how to configure and how to manage and how to do those day two and through, through day and operations is up on charmhub.io. And that's it. Thank you. Still got two minutes for questions. Go, Ali. Uh, uh, which kind of operator? CNCF. CNCF. Um, I do believe there are some, some discussions on that. I can talk to you outline, outside. We can, we can figure that out. Yeah, there's, there's certainly, um, it's a very dynamic community, so there are discussions about creating charms for a number of different things. Legend is just one of the examples, but we can certainly, Canonical can help you create charms for public applications or internal applications. We have the notion of the charmhub.io, which is a public charm store, but you can also have an on-prem charm store as well that you can use for your own internal versions of, of charms that you don't publish to the community, for example. And as far as I understand, <clears throat> Juju and the charms use Kubernetes operators as a technology. They do, yeah. yes. Yep. Yeah. So it doesn't require Kubernetes, that just happens to be something that is used here. Juju and Kubernetes are separate entities. Juju can operate and manage and orchestrate Kubernetes as well as other services like a full open stack or a full Postgres cluster or something like that. Any other questions? Well, fantastic. Sorry for the technical case. difficulties, but we made it. I made our way through. We Thank you so much for coming.